Hey guys, welcome back. This week we we're talking about how to fix your lower back. One of the predominant issues that come with using the rowing machine is that people are always very cautious of their backs because frankly back injuries are really prevalent. I've suffered quite a brutal one. I spent, a, I mean, several years, I still deal with it. I had a completely blown out back and a lot of people have those same concerns. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, let's get you over that. And it's kind of a three-parter. So you can go a few different routes, but as, as I see it, there are really three things that you have to worry about. Number one is get warmed up before your workout, right? That's step number one. You have to think about a preparatory mechanism for the rowing movement or frankly, anything where your back could potentially be compromised. Not saying that rowing is going to compromise your back, but anything where you're gonna see a significant hip hinge or loading through the trunk, you have to get prepped and get things turned on and firing. So um, that's number one. Number two is how do you alter your movement or what are the things you need to be cognizant of while you're on the machine so that you can stay safe and stay protected and what are the things that you can do to reinforce that and then the third tier would be what do you do afterwards how do you i don't want to say cool down but what are the things that you can do in your off time that will help to put you in a better position and let's start at step one which is getting you prepped Something that I'm a big fan of is uh, we find that a lot of people tend to end up in a lot of external rotation. Now, what is external rotation? Well, if these are my feet, right? If my feet look like this, this is external rotation. If my toes point out, that's external rotation. If they point in, that's internal rotation. Now, external rotation is something that a lot of people have. It's fairly common because you have your adductors. Those are the things that bring things closer to the midline of your body. So if I'm using a thigh master, I bring my legs together, that is adducting, okay? If I'm using a, if I'm like leg swinging, <laughs> as my leg swings out, I am abducting, abducting, okay? So abducting for most people is pretty easy as well as external rotation. Adducting, adducting and internal rotation can be a little bit more challenging, but the system, the body, I should say, the body is built to be symmetrical. Every muscle serves an agonist and an antagonist purpose, meaning it's meant to support and move in one way and it's meant to relax and let something else take over. For example, if I am flexing my bicep, I just wanna show that off right there. If I'm flexing my bicep, my bicep is the primary mover here. Now to do that, my tricep has to turn off, right? My tricep can't simultaneously be engaged if I am flexing. However, the opposite is true when I extend my arm. So if I extend, my tricep is working and my bicep turns off for that purpose. So that's what I mean by agonist and antagonist. Now, what we need to think about is the way that the legs move. We spend a lot of time sitting. Our lives are, are sitting in chairs, sitting in car seats, sitting at your desk, sitting at the dinner table, sitting at your couch watching TV, sitting on the floor folding clothes, whatever it may be, we spend a lot of time sitting and often the knees just kind of drape out. What can cause a back issue or a lower back issue is simply a lack of stability of the spine because things aren't really working together. Your muscles aren't turned on, they're not supporting your hips and in turn your hips aren't supporting your spine and then the spine just kind of ooh, melts, right? It turns into this kind of soft, gushy, it's not supported, all the muscles around it, I mean the spine doesn't, the muscles around it kind of turn gushy and they're not very supportive. So what we wanna talk about is how do we get those things active, turning on and supporting the spine. So to prep for that, you're gonna need a few tools. The first would be just a floor. A floor. If you have a hard floor, I suggest a yoga mat, but you don't need one. You can use carpet, that's fine too. Uh, the next thing is going to be some sort of like block. A foam roller, a yoga block, even a wood block is fine. As long as it's like four inches wide at least, you can have like a small ball, something, you know, about this big. I don't know what that would be, a cantaloupe. You can get a cantaloupe. And then you also need uh, like a belt or a tie. A tie actually works pretty well or a belt, that works too. What we're gonna do is essentially create internal rotation and we're gonna help the hip joints kind of distract but also turn on all of those muscles that help to internally rotate the legs. Right? External rotation can be good, but we also have a balancing system of internal rotation. So all we're doing by this is priming the hips to get turned on so that they can work for you because when we're rowing, the hips are extremely important. So that's step one. 
Now, you're gonna lay down on the floor. You're going to take this block and you're going to place it between your knees. Now, your feet are gonna be flat on the floor and your knees are gonna be bent. You're gonna be face up. Okay, we call that supine. You're gonna be supine on the floor, so face up on your back, knees bent, feet flat on the floor. That block is going to be between your knees and you're gonna have that belt or the tie tied around your ankles so that your feet are about hip width apart. Now, you are going to gently squeeze your knees in on the block or the cantaloupe while pressing your ankles out into the tie or the belt. And you're just gonna release and you're gonna press, hold, release, press, hold, release. And you're gonna do that for about 15 repetitions. And you're gonna do that three times through. Okay, so that's number one. Next, you're gonna untie those things. You're going to end up on your hands and your knees. Cool? Now, you're gonna end up on your hands and your knees. You're gonna be in a, a bit of like a, a cat-cow position. Now, I want your hands under your shoulders and I want your knees under your hips. Then you're going to take your right hand and walk it forward about a hand length and you're going to take your left knee and walk it forward that same hand length. So you're, now you're gonna be offset. Now, keeping your legs straight and keeping your hands in place, you're gonna gently rock back and forth. Now what this is doing is setting your hips at a bit of an angle here, and as you move, your hips are actually two articulating pieces separate of each other. I know we think of the hips as one piece, but they're separate. Now as you do that, what you're creating is a little bit of articulation out of each side of the hip. You're gonna do that 20 times per side, and then you're gonna switch. That's number two. For number three, you are going to stand up and you're going to need a band of some kind. You could also use a tie for this purposes. You could use a rubber, a, like a, a workout band. Um, I have a crossover symmetry back here. You can use that too. What you're gonna do is take that band, tie, crossover symmetry, and you're going to you know, put it through a door. It just needs an anchor of some kind at about shoulder height. There you're going to step so that you are perpendicular to the band. You're gonna take the band in your hands and you're gonna press it straight out in front of you. So it's giving you some lateral stability, meaning it's pulling, it's wanting you to rotate towards it. You're gonna resist that and you're gonna press the band out and straight in front of you. Your arms are gonna be locked in place. Your feet are gonna be underneath your hips and you are going to squeeze your butt and squeeze your belly. Now all you're gonna do is resist that urge to rotate back to the band, and you are going to take small, tiny steps back with your feet alternating steps. You're gonna take those tiny steps, and what we're doing with that is turning on all the little muscles that support your spine, all the little guys inside there that you need turned on and hot and active and ready to go. We're just doing that on a very gentle scale by asking you to stabilize against that band, but take little steps back with your feet. So, that is your warm up. That's how you're gonna prep for it, okay? Now make sure that you guys check back for part two where we are going to talk about how do we actually change our movement on the machine so that our back is protected and what are the things that we can do so that we strengthen our midline in other work so that when we get on the rower, we're healthy, we're not worried about our back and that our spine becomes more and more supported. We grow stronger, we grow healthier and our bodies become happier so that there's less of a, a concern when we are worrying, thinking about anything that might entail our spine having to stabilize and keep our body uh, in place. So that's gonna be part two. So guys, this has been part one. How do you warm up your back for getting on the rower and for protecting your back, right? How do we, how do we fix back issues by just little everyday things that we can do which improve the way that we move and aren't necessarily related to the rower. They are simply um, this, this important thing that we need to do It takes just a few minutes but will go a long ways in helping you keep your back healthy, keep your back happy, keep it protected, and get stronger. We don't wanna just live in this space of surviving, we wanna thrive, and that's what this is about. So, thank you for joining, guys. Make sure that you check the description below for any of the tools that I've been talking about, the crossover symmetry, yoga mats, yoga blocks, all the things that I like to use and that I have here in my garage gym, um, which I use on a regular basis. So check the notes below, check the description below, and leave a comment. Let me know if this has worked for you, if you've tried things like this, or if you have some stuff that works even better that you are using. Guys, thanks for checking in. We will see you on the other side.